Hey, I'm John Gately. Welcome to the show here from Plymouth, Massachusetts, America's hometown. Yeah, we're in Massachusetts, so kind of behind enemy lines. Uh, today, we're going to talk about critical race theory and the attack on the opposition to critical race theory, which is very, very interesting. There's a huge attack now from the left to criticize people who are criticizing critical race theory, to demonize you. And uh, I mean, it's just an amazing uh turn of events because it's quite clear that the left realizes this is not a popular policy. We have, uh, let's see if we can bring it up here on the screen here. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, a, new pol a new poll out from YouGov. Where do we go here? There we go. Uh, let's bring this up for you here. YouGov, where 58% um, of Americans are holding an unfavorable view of critical race theory, 38% favorable. And, uh, you know, YouGov sponsored poll by The Economist. I think there could be some better polling on this for sure. But it's one of one touch point that I think we could definitely people sense that liberals have gone too far. I mean, the establishment uh, liberals have gone way. I don't even want to say liberals. I shouldn't even say it. Dave Rubin would hit me over the hand for that. Uh, will say the left has gone too far and they're starting to sense it. And so now they're turning their criticism towards the critics of critical race theory, basically labeling the critics of critical race theory as being uh, completely di divorced from reality. It all started on um, Tuesday with the article in NBC News. If you have not seen it, you should read it. And basically it's a digestion of all of the steps that have effectively taken place to oppose critical race theory across the country, effectively blaming Tucker Carlson for nationalizing the issue. Uh, the best take, I think, on this came from uh, Noah Pollack, Noah Pollack here, in his thread. This piece, like every MSN, MS mainstream media piece to date, shows a complete unwillingness to deal with the substance of the issue. Bingo or why so many parents have never gotten involved in school boards have suddenly become activists. Big O number two. What are people like Taylor Kincaid, Tyler Kincaid afraid of? This cup of coverage is good for the anti-woke side. I think this is a great take by Noah Pollock here. Uh, it indicates that woke activists have a little confidence in their product. That is, that they're, they're worried. I mean, they are starting to worry. When you start to criticize the critics rather than um, support your side with arguments, it shows that you're worried. Um, but this is all a big operation in distraction and concealment. Big bingo. Wokeism thrives in secrecy, which is why actually we're making this video, Taylor. Uh, Noah continues on, which is why parent activism and getting involved in school boards is so important and why it is enraging to NBC News which we mentioned a few minutes ago, now on a mission to paint engage parents as weirdos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're opposed to critical race theory, you are absolutely positively a weirdo, according to MS, uh, well, probably MSNBC and definitely NBC News. Sunshine is the best disinfectant. Thank you very much, uh, Noah. Also, excellent uh, treatment on this over at, as usual, legal insurrection uh, on this article. Um, uh, about uh, panic in the media relative to the pushback that critical race theory is having in school districts across the country. Uh, Vanity Fair also tried their own version of the NBC piece in, in, a, in a pretty good article from The Federalist by uh, apparently an intern at The Federal, Gabe Kamansky. Shout out to Gabe Kamansky, uh, whoever they are. Uh, I'm going to cut, actually, I think he buried the lead here, Gabe. Um, uh, I'm going to actually read your last paragraph first. Uh, the problem with NBC News and Vanity Fair articles is simple. There's no attempt to be honest <clears throat> about is what is happening in American schools by neglecting to, at a minimum standard, understand the term and instead framing the right as being oddly aggressive in the face of ideological opposition. Uh, Klein shows her, the author of the Vanity Fair article, shows her true colors. If anything... Vanity Fair suggests they are the real conspiracy theorists. You might remember uh, just the tweet the other day 
where there is most definitely this effort to conflate, conflate's the word, yep, conflate, um, the teaching of critical race theory with other basic uh, things that we teach in, in schools, like slavery, Jim Crow, Montgomery Bus Boycott, Martin Luther King. Those are being taught, and there is this murmur out there, more than a murmur, really, that if you're opposed critical race theory, you also oppose the teaching of those things. That is completely, that is absolutely completely false. Uh, critical race theory is a theory which says that there are a group of people that are the oppressors based upon the color of your skin, and there are these other group of people that, that are the oppressed based upon the color of the skin, and th that's cast in stone. Teachings of Martin Luther King are effectively the incomplete opposite. Martin, Martin Luther King wanted America to live up to its promise, right, of being colorblind, to see the content of your character, not the color of your skin. Uh, no one is alleging that slavery, that is, slavery is being taught, and the Civil War is being taught, Jim Crow is being taught, uh, the fact that we had slavery in the United States, it's being taught. And anyone that equates the theory that hey, we don't want that taught with critical race theory, no. The opposition is to critical race theory. Do not try to conflate those things together. There's nothing wrong with teaching slavery, Montgomery Bus Boycott, Martin Luther King, all of those things. They should be taught. Jim Crow should be taught in school. Um, to allege that you're opposed to critical race theory and the teaching of those things, that's just completely false. I mean, that's just wrong. So they'll stop at nothing to <clears throat> label you uh, as uh, some type of weirdo. And here we have a clip from MSNBC, let's just bring it full screen, uh, where effectively you're being, uh, uh, how shall I say this, uh, you're being labeled a Nazi. So... Uh, it, I can't even describe this. This is this, this listen. Jamil mentions the fear uh, that's driving a lot of this, the, the kind of manufactured fear, but totally manufactured. Your fear is not real. Uh, it's totally manufactured, um, total astroturf. It's not just in terms of uh, critical race theory and you know academic teaching. It's it's the attack on elites. It's the fear of socialism taking over. We should be fearful of socialism. That's a real fear, sadly. You know, I thought we just defeated communism back in 1990-ish. But it's back. And, you know, if we have to defeat it again, we will. America that we've seen in places like Hungary under Viktor Orban and under Vladimir Putin's Russia. You wrote a book about fascist propaganda. Is all of this part of that? Right, so basically they're labeling your opposition to critical race, th critical race theory as fascist, prop fascist propaganda. And of course, now look at their guest, just dive right into that. Got to agree with the host. They totally agree with the host. Absolutely. What, what if Germany, what if AfD, the neo fascist You know what's coming. The second they say, what if in Germany, you know it's coming. ...fascist party in Germany that advocates ending Holocaust education came to power and ended Holocaust education. Uh, be, and they say the same talking points there. They All right, so no one's arguing that, and no one's arguing that we should get rid of traditional civil rights education in the United States. Absolutely not. It's very important. No one's arguing that. Montgomery Bocot, Martin Luther King, slavery, Jim Crow, Dred Scott, all of those things should be taught. Those are not the same thing as critical race theory say we don't want germans to feel guilty about our past uh we want people not to feel guilty about things their ancestors did they do want you to feel guilty they want you to feel guilty about something that may have happened before your ancestors were even in this country uh, we'd all be horrified everyone in america would be horrified by that uh, this this tactic D do you want germans still to feel guilty germans of today 2021 should they still walk around every day feeling guilty uh i think as a society they build bear some uh, all those people are now dead right 
is the American version of an international tactic. In other countries, it's gender ideology. So in Germany, they're targeting Holocaust education. In Hungary, they're targeting, and Brazil, they're targeting gender ideology. Uh, I can't take it uh, enough. I can't take it anymore. Uh, but effectively, you're a Nazi if you oppose critical race theory. I mean, the message is pretty darn clear. Um, bans continue. I mean, the ban, the efforts to ban critical race theories continue. There's one um, in the governor of Texas to sign the law. That's very nice. Uh, there's an effort, of, obviously, in Florida. There's now an effort in um, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. A new measure would bar public schools in Washington, D.C. from making students participate in critical race theory-related anti-racism exercises to apologize for their identity, uh, introduced by uh, Representative Grotham from Wisconsin. Ending critical race theory in D.C. Public Schools Act would effectively prohibit public institutions from hosting anti-racism sessions. Um, this anti-racism sessions concept is an interesting one because I think what we're seeing is anti-racism, critical race theory, be woven into every aspect of education. I mean, even even topics, you know, like gym or math. And there's some some evidence of this. Rob Schilling's a radio host, uh, has a pretty good clip on this. Let's take a look. Coffee with the school principal. Uh, there was a question twice. The, the question um, is, this is a school, by the way, this is a school if superintendent. If families are allowed to opt their children out of the curriculum. I wish uh, this is a school principal, and she's having like a coffee, Zoom coffee thing. In, I believe it's in Virginia. And she's getting asked the question, can, her, can students opt out? Here's her answer. Wouldn't, um, just because I think it's important to have all voices at the table, but just like... She doesn't want you to opt out, but... You can opt, just like families can opt them out of reading a book in English class, uh, you can choose not to have your child participate in these advis advisory lessons. Um, you would just simply uh, call the school and uh, mark your, and have Miss Wilkes in the registrar's office mark your child present for the day. Okay, so what she says is that if you want to opt out because it's a it's some type of teaching that um, you don't want your child involved with, you can send a, a note. Uh, you know, Epstein's mother can send a note. And um, if you don't get the reference, look it up. Um, and they can get out of it. But wait, wait a second here. Hold on. Dr. Costa cannot jump. This is the like superintendent. So this is the this is the principal's boss, and she wants to chime in. Check it out. Jump in. Yeah, please. I just want to tell um, in regard to the opting out question. This work is happening in all content areas. It's always work, isn't it? This work. We have work. We have work to do. Yes. So. God, God I I hate that phrase. So. Teachers across the county are um, incorporating anti-racism work into their content. So if you're um, opting out of these advisory lessons, your child, it, these these topics and these lessons and this um, this concept is going to be woven through in all of their classes. So basically what they're saying is they don't want you to be able to opt out because uh, it's woven through everything. And that's what they want. And even if, you know, someday uh, we'll defeat this whole critical race theory, but, the, but it will be woven through. It's going to be like mixed in, you know, once you kind of pour this into the batter, it's really hard to get it out of there entirely. Um, there is a, a really interesting article over at the Daily Wire where East Coast Law School is now mandating justice classes to graduate. Uh, it was a very simple uh, situation here. D Daily Wire email uh, from Rutgers University. So the Daily Wire uh, got them to confirm this. Uh, students will be required to take a, quote, race equity graduation requirement. The course must focus on, quote, content relating to structural inequality, discrimination, cultural context, or cultural competency, end quote. Uh, the struggle sessions will be mandatory. Now, quote, we've made changes to the law school curriculum that were proposed by our anti-racist audit curriculum committee that will go into effect in the coming year. 
end quote. The email received by uh, Dean this, Dean that, and Chancellor that, who is a uh, <clears throat> social justice scholar. Uh, all right, so I, I can't take it anymore. There was one other thing I wanted to talk to you. Ah, yes. So not only will you be required to take the class, uh, you will also be prohibited on most of these campuses from speaking your own mind anywhere. So your First Amendment rights are under attack on campus, if you hadn't already noticed. And this is a very interesting clip, and this is probably our last clip of the day, where there's an effort in Congress to preserve student First Amendment rights all over campus. You see, the effort currently that's out there is to create free speech zones, places where you'd be allowed to say anything you want. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that the whole country is supposed to be a free speech zone, right? Uh, whether you're on campus or off campus. So here is uh, Ducey inter introduce, uh, uh, interviewing uh uh, Jordan and God, I can't remember the woman's other. Uh, I'm sure it will come up in a second. Here we go. A cat, you and Jim have teamed up. Cat, cat. I'm sure she's a congresswoman. Uh, with the Young America's Foundation, and it's an emphasis on America's college campuses because you, you're very concerned about what's happening at America's colleges and universities. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Jim and I have teamed up along with Young Americans for Freedom to form the Campus Free Speech Caucus. Because let's be honest, our college campuses these days, these aren't higher education institutions, these are indoctrination camps. And it, you know, as the youngest Republican woman in Congress today, it wasn't too long ago that I, I probably should have put that in my uh, introduction of her. I'm not familiar with her, forgive me. I found myself as an undergraduate student being attacked by my Latin American uh, <laughs> politics professor telling me that all white Republican men are the source of world conflict. <laughs> uh, right. So I myself have experienced the harassment, the vitriol from the liberal left on college campuses, and now we have students across the country that are being uh, attacked, they are being vilified. It is absolutely ludicrous that we as taxpayers fund this type of behavior. Mm -hmm. So Jim and I, along with the Young Americans for Freedom Foundation, we are going to be holding these institutions accountable and giving these conservative students an outlet where they can bring their stories to us and we can educate our colleagues on the dangers of the indoctrination that is happening on our college campuses. You know, and Jim, we've been talking for years about what's going on on college campuses, but now it seems to be happening at the high school level. All right, we won't we won't continue on with that. But other than to say, maybe oh, that's better. Uh, other than to say, you're not a bigot if you oppose critical race theory. Critical race theory is bigoted. And the fact that they're criticizing you as a critic, basically that's, what do they call it? Uh, what, what would Freud call that? Freud called that projecting. Yes, it's projecting. And keep at it, I guess is my only encouragement to you. And don't listen to these people. Uh, understand that in the light of day, in the marketplace of ideas, this can be defeated. And also understand in the big picture that this is just a small piece or a strategy, a tactic to, a, to achieve a larger change, which is effectively communism, socialism, Marxism, which are all the same thing, by the way. You know, if you, if you want to debate me on that, we could do that another day. The only difference between those concepts is the spelling of those words. Um, but this is just a tactic, critical race theory, to achieve those goals. Hey, I'm John Gately. Thanks for watching from Plymouth, Massachusetts, behind enemy lines, America's hometown. Have a great day.